seek you, Lord. I seek you always. I seek you everywhere. Because you alone can bring to fulfillment this creature who is but a small part of your creation. The paths that lead to God are many because many are His invitations. The contemplative life is a response of exclusive consecration to Him, rooted in love. God calls one of His creatures to dedicate herself totally to Him. And so the unthinkable happens. The woman espouses her God. Whoever wants to come after me, let her take up her cross and follow me. This is how it happened to Augustine. He followed the reasons of the heart. Wherever the soul turns, if it not be towards God, it clings to sorrow. Undisturbed peace is found where love is never forsaken. Fix your dwelling in Him, O my soul. O eternal truth and true love and beloved eternity, you are my God. I sigh for you by day and by night. However, in the soul of Augustine, the desire for God was inseparably united to the need for friendship. In the book of the Soliloquies, he asked, Why do you wish the people you love to live with you? And he himself answers, So that together we may search for God and our soul. In this way, Whoever discovers first the truth can easily lead others. And so Augustine founded a community based on friendship and moved by this desire to seek together the paths of the Lord. From this powerful experience, he wrote his rule to the brethren, which wisely guides the path of the Augustinian monastic lifestyle. The main purpose for your having come together is to live harmoniously in the monastery, intent upon God in oneness of mind and heart. Centuries of history have kept the monastic insights of St. Augustine. Pope John Paul II himself called us to be faithful to them. Augustine and the Church, two great names that specifically defined you, the heritage of one and the reality of the other, urge you never to deny what is rightly called the Augustinian charism of common life made one by love. Act so that the church may be seen in each of your communities. And so Augustine's ideal continues to live on. You alone do I love. You alone I follow. You alone I seek. And I am determined to serve you alone. Here I am, Lord. I have come to do your will. Lying on the floor is a symbol by which the candidate to contemplative life expresses before the people her wish to give herself completely to the mystery of love. I give myself to God for the rest of my life through the solemn vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience. And I promise to continue my quest for God together with my sisters and to serve the people of God in community life and mutual sharing of goods. With this solemn ritual, 
begins a simple life of poverty and sharing, summed up by the opening words of the rule. First of all, my dear sisters, love God, love your neighbor, love each other. What is the secret of this love? Where do we find the strength to persevere? At the well of living water, at the springs that quench the thirst forever. Whoever drinks of the water that I shall give will never be thirsty. For the water that I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The Augustinian nun arrives at this love by persevering in prayer, always, day and night. Praise and bless the Lord your God every day of your life. Our spirit needs silence and solitude. And in this solitude, God lets himself be seen. In her joined hands and contemplative prayer, the Augustinian nun brings all of humanity to God. John Paul II says, At this difficult hour of history, which is so troubled, your prayer, fed by the sacrifice of solitude and silence, like a new form of martyrdom, draws the merciful goodness of God to our earth. The entire life of the Augustinian nun revolves around divine worship. We ascend with our hearts and we sing as we walk along. Common prayer lies at the center of the Augustinian monastic life and highlights every hour of the day. It is a prayer of thanksgiving for the gift of time. It is a sacrifice and atonement for those who do not pray. The peace of the cloister and the praise of the heart flower in sisterly concord and in a symphony of color. The reading of the scripture and a time of study have a special importance in the Augustinian life. After the liturgy, community reading becomes the meeting point of the whole community and makes the sisters attuned to the Word of God. From the beginning of the meal to the end, listen to the customary reading. For you have not only to satisfy your physical hunger, but also to hunger for the Word of God. The Augustinian nun also leads her dedication to God and to her community in moments of play and relaxation in a style of simplicity and innocent joy. Sisterly friendship strengthens one's fidelity to the monastic vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience. The Augustinian nun does not avoid the human condition. She is united to humanity in its various forms of work. No one is to seek her own advantage. Everything you do should be for the service of the community. In fact, you should work with more zeal and enthusiasm than if each person were merely working for herself and her own interests. Work helps the Augustinian nun to understand the true meaning of sharing in the work of creation. Just like manual work, intellectual work is important in the Augustinian monastic life. For Augustine himself spent his life studying, teaching, writing, and preaching. 
The study in common and the seeking together truth develop the sister's human and spiritual maturity. They also improve their ability for personal dialogue and their sense of responsibility for the problems of humanity. For St. Augustine, books were concrete tools to deepen his knowledge of truth, and writing was his way to communicate new insights to his brothers and sisters. For this reason, every monastery has its own library. Love shows itself especially in the care for the sick and elderly sisters, for in them they serve Christ himself. St. Augustine did not conceive of his monasteries as places to escape from and to avoid the problems of the world, but as places of welcome and centers for inner reflection and prayer for people in search of themselves and of God. So the mystery of a life hidden with Christ in God becomes a ministry, a service, and an opening to dialogue. Correspondence is a written dialogue, just as it was for St. Augustine when he shared with others what had been revealed to him in prayer and meditation. Dialogue happens also when we meet together with people of every condition, young and old, families and groups. In today's uncertainties and troubles, the longing for the Father's house brings many men and women to speak with the nuns as a source of hope and inspiration. The Augustinian contemplative life is not only a service to God, but also a ministry for the evangelization of humanity. Dialogue is a school of prayer through secret ways that only the heart knows. Prayer touches the soul and awakens the eternal longing for God. And they asked him, Master, where do you live? And he said to them, Come and see. Come and share our prayers. Experience our community life. Return to your heart. Return to yourself. Return to God.